where I, I have relocated, you know, I just relocated to this place newly. I was living here before. I was living in Lagos. Now I am now in a bar. How can I still succeed in the business? And then the next thing we used to work is to start doing what? What was the thing we used to do when our contact is finished? What do we usually do? What do we do? We say, I'm in a new environment. I don't have contact. What do we do, please? You start doing what? You start doing strangers booking. We start using strangers. And once you start using strangers, what usually happens? What usually happens to you? Eh? You go for strangers. And when you start using strangers, what usually happens after that? What usually happens? It be, most of you begin to receive bus bills, right? From strangers. And they say, nah, I cannot succeed. I can't succeed, right? I can't succeed. I am not getting the result I'm supposed to get. Therefore, this is what, this is what it is. This is what it is, right? So what happens is that most of us get stuck. A lot of us, even a lot of people even quit the business, get frustrated in the process and all of that. Now, let me tell you something, and I'm going to be very straight with you, and I'm going to be very, very frank with you. <clears throat> it is difficult to get strangers to do the business. What I mean is, what I mean is, people, you see, you see, the trust quotient, the trust quotient, when you are dealing with a stranger is really low. People have a problem trusting total strangers. They have a problem trusting people they don't know. In fact, even you, even you, you have a problem trusting people you don't know. Is that true? So the trust quotient is very, very little. When you are dealing with total strangers, when total strangers are dealing with you, and that is why the ratio of results is very low, very, very low. Why? The rejection is very high. Why? Because the trust quotient is very low. Some people keep saying there's no sound, there's no sound. I hope you can hear me. Confirm that you can hear me. Let me be sure. Let me be sure. Confirm that you can hear me. You can hear me, right? All right, please tell the people who are complaining about um, sound, tell them what to do so that they can get to hear me, okay? So they can get to hear me. So you see, the trust quotient is very low. And that is why the rejection with strangers is very high. And the frustration is also very high. By the time somebody does strangers, that's all you are depending on. What happens is that what? Ah, no, 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 no. You get stuck. Now, let me tell you something. Network marketing is a relationship business. Write down somewhere. Write it down somewhere. Network marketing is a what is a relationship business. Does that mean that strangers does not work? Yes, it does. But it is what it is very minimal, right? And you are not meant to depend on strangers solely. No, no. You are not meant to depend on what only on strangers. Some of you, that's what you are doing. And I came here to help you. Right, I came here to help you. You are not meant to depend on strangers' contacts only. No, strangers' contact is what you are supposed to do in addition. Let it be an addition to augment what you already have. Right, what you already have. But what so many of us that we spend all of our time, we spend everything we're doing, all we're depending 100% on strangers. No. 
It is meant to augment every other thing that you're doing. It's not meant to be your only system. Are you with me now? So that you can get better results. Some of your businesses have been stuck because of this. And that's what I came here to solve this problem today. So like I said, network marketing is a relationship business. It's a relationship business. People will easily join the people that they know. They must not be best of friends, but at least they know. Now, you know, we live in a generation right now where what? Where there's a lot of schemes going on. There's a lot of scam going on. There's a lot of things, you know, people have been falling victims to a whole lot of things. And that is reducing the trust quotient. That is reducing the trust people have for businesses. So when you are contacting a total stranger and you are talking to him about businesses, about putting parting ways with his money, that person will be very extremely reluctant. So that, that is why the result you get from strangers is very low because the what? Because the trust quotient is very, very low. Are you with me now? So you are not meant to depend on strangers alone. Right, it is just meant to be an addition. Do you understand? It's meant after you have done everything. So, network marketing is a relationship business. You will easily sign up people you have relationship with. Like I said, they must not be your best friends, right? They must not be your best friends. That's not what I mean. People you know, at least people who know, people who are your acquaintances. Uh -huh. That's a better word. People who are your acquaintance, at least they know you. So if you want to succeed or you want to, you want to do better at prospecting, at making sure you don't run out of contact, you have to start building acquaintances. Now, let me tell you why a lot of people prefer to do strangers than to talk to new people, than to you know, get new contacts. Let me tell you why. It is because of the fear of rejection. Ah, this new person I am meeting. This new person I'm meeting, what he, what will he say? Will he like it? What if this person, you know, talks to me the way I don't want? What if, so we are afraid of meeting total strangers. Just that we are afraid of what, of rejection. And because of that fear of rejection, we cannot even go out to meet new persons. So we would rather sit down and say, ah, my contact is exhausted. I don't know anybody again. I don't know anybody again. Today, I will help you. I will show you how to overcome this fear of rejection and how to make sure you always have contacts. Are you ready? Are you ready? Now, this training is so critical and so important. And the goal is to help as many people who are struggling with contact. You don't have new contact. You don't have um, um, warm contacts to call and all of that. You're going to pay attention. You will learn how to even convert what cold contacts to what to new contacts. Do you understand? Right? So how to convert what cold contacts to new contacts? So I, I was preparing this slide, but on, on the second thought, I said, no. If I prepare this slide, I might not be able to deliver this training the way it is. Now, this is a training by Matt Morris. And Matt Morris is going to teach us how to do what? How to become successful at prospecting, both warm market and cold market, especially cold market, especially the people you don't know. So I am going to be playing this video, this training. Now, every one of you, if you really want to get the best out of this training, wherever you are right now, you have to sit down where there is no distraction and you will need to pay close attention to everything that is going to be said get your writing material get your book get your paper get your book get your pen rather so that you can write down pay attention is a video so it's not there's nothing like last slide last slides next slide next slide last slide no you have to pay i'd say you should write don't just be screenshotting if you are screenshotting, you will not get the best. You can screenshot for the things you've forgotten, but get your writing material so that you can write. Because as you are writing, as you are writing, it will be entering inside of you. 
So get your writing materials. Listen to me. The people who will get value from this training tonight are the people who are going to do what I am saying right now. You are struggling. You have done strangers contact and then you are in fact, you are stuck right now in your business. Pay attention to this training tonight. Get a writing material. Make sure your phone is fully charged or have a power bank. Make sure you are not distracted at all. If your network knocks you out, knock yourself back fast and make sure you don't miss any part of this training. Are you with me now? Are you with me now? I, just, I was doing it into a training. I said, no, I won't deliver this in the way he did. But so let me rather play the video, right? Most times, why I prefer to do the trainings, convert it into so that I can explain some things. You know, he's a white man, right? But if you pay attention, you will really hear everything he's saying and you will hear it very, very clearly. So this training tonight, this millionaire school tonight is for those who want to change their results. Some people, once we start playing this video now, some people will leave the meeting. They say, ah, this thing is boring. I'll be this one is whatever. They will not pay attention and they will keep struggling in their business. So make sure all of your downlines are here. There are two split videos. You have 20 something minutes, two videos, 20 something minutes. Today is what's going to be one of the shortest millionaire schools we've had, right? It's going going to be two split words, two split um, 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 videos. I'm going to play both of them back to back. One talks about the warm market. The other one talks about the cold market. So are you ready? Do you have your writing materials? If you have your writing materials and you're already seated in a place where there is no network, type ready. If you are not seated, you don't have your writing materials, don't type ready. Are you ready for this training? Are you ready for this training tonight? If you are ready, type ready. Okay, so we are getting started. If your teammates are not connected yet till now, it is time for you to make sure that each and every one of them is connected. So let's go. Okay, let me. Okay. building, finding prospects. And before I get into a lot of the meat uh, behind this module, I just want to kind of talk about warm market recruiting versus uh, generating leads, doing things online, things like that. And listen, I've done a lot of uh, online marketing. I've cold called thousands and thousands, probably tens of thousands of leads that, you know, I've personally cold called. I've, I've done a bit of everything over the last 20 years. And, you know, unfortunately, there's so many people who get into network marketing and, Maybe because it's just shyness, fear of rejection, whatever that may be, or maybe it's because there's so many online prom programs promoting don't talk to your friends and family and things like that, where people come in and they just don't want to talk to the people that they know. And here's the way, this is what I've come to after 20 years, is this. If you are not willing to talk to the people that you know about your product, if you're not willing to do that, if you feel uncomfortable doing that, you need to go find a product or a company that you are comfortable sharing with the people that you know. You know, there's something that I've uh, heard a while back and that's the grandmother test is, you know, you should only market a product or a service that you would actually be comfortable telling your grandmother about. And another thing that's very true, and listen, I owned uh, my own network marketing company and we actually had had an online lead generation program. We had kind of a marketing system built in and we did really well with that. And we kind of had two factions of our company. We had a lot of online marketers and then we had the majority were, you know, older school, you know, they did one-on-ones, two-on-ones, hotel meetings, home parties, you name it. And this is what was interesting is within the internet marketers that we had in our company, we had a handful of internet marketers who would enroll a ton of people. I mean, they could enroll, uh, you know, a few dozen people a month and they would sometimes do that consistently. But here's what was true is they had almost no duplication. Very, very wide. They'd enroll 100, 200, 300 or more people, but there was no duplication. You know, it was like of the 300 people that they would recruit, it might get two levels deep or it might get three levels deep. And the attrition was ferocious, was terrible. I mean, people quit as fast as they were coming in. And if you looked at the people who were doing the old school, 
talking to the people that they know, then what we would see is there wasn't anyone who was enrolling two or 300 people. They might enroll, the leaders would enroll 30, 40, 50, maybe as much as 100, but it was massive, massive duplication. And here is something, this is a rule I think you should write down, and it is this, people want to enroll others the way in which they were enrolled. People want to enroll others the way in which they were enrolled. And so if you set up this intricate lead generation campaign, maybe you're running ads in the newspaper and things like that, then there's a learning curve. You know, they're going to want to set up ads or they're going to want to set up their website. They're going to want to set up the autoresponders. And, you know, that learning curve is so big that it creates a breakdown, a lack of duplication. It creates a tremendous amount of attrition. And so, you know, what I have seen it, it, let me tell you what I haven't seen. What I haven't seen is a network marketing company or an organization within a network marketing company relying on a cold market strategy that has created long-term massive duplication. If you look at all of the billion dollar companies out there, in fact, if you look at the hundred million dollar companies plus, all of the network marketing companies that have created sustainable momentum and sustainable growth over a long period of time, they've done it through talking to the warm market. And I'll give you my story. See, what happened with me is I got into network marketing and I would only show my business or my products to the people that I was pretty sure would do it, or at least the people who I thought maybe had a strong chance of at least saying yes. And, you know, what was interesting is I failed miserably. In fact, uh, if you know my story by now, it took me almost six years to get to a full-time income. And I cannot tell you how amazingly frustrating that was. And so here's the bottom line is you cannot play mind reader. Um, the people who you think are going to say yes, in many cases, are going to say no. The people who you think are going to say no, in many cases, they're going to say yes. So you cannot, again, play mind mind reader. You've got to go out and show it to everyone. And I'll just let you in on a little secret. This is the number one reason why network marketers don't talk to the people that they know about their opportunity. And it's actually the number one reason because it's actually the number one fear in the world which is the fear of rejection. So if you wanna be a good network marketer, you're gonna to have to obviously get over the fear yourself. And if you wanna be a great network marketer, you're going to have to get good at helping p other people allevi alleviate their fears of rejection. And so after building teams of over half a million people, generating hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in revenues for the companies that have a representative, I I'll tell you there's no magic training that you can give that's going to solve that challenge in everyone's mind. But I'm going to give you an analogy. In fact, I'll give you a couple analogies here that you can use. You can, in fact, use the word-for-word -word verbiage that I'm telling you now. This is what I use to train my group on how to get rid of the fear of rejection. And again, something that you can use this with your team, if you're not training on stage and things like that, I would encourage you to talk about one of these two analogies with every person you enroll in the business. Because here's what I realize is when I enroll someone, the biggest challenge that I have is just getting them to invite people and to show the business to the people that they know. And so, Here's the story that I tell. You see, I look at this business kind of like being a waiter. If you've ever been a waiter, if you've ever been out to eat before, we've all had a waiter service dinner. And then after dinner, they ask us if we want some dessert. So here's the question. Have you ever told your waiter no? Of course you've told the waiter no. Uh, everyone has. Now, when you told the waiter no, did the waiter start to beg you to order some dessert? They didn't beg and plead. Of course not. Just like we're never going to beg and plead people to, you know, buy our products or beg them to join our business. So does the waiter take any personal offense whatsoever? They take none. Does the waiter start crying? Do they get emotionally disturbed? Do they get pissed off and say, desserts don't work. Restaurants are a scam. I knew it. No, that would be so completely ridiculous. So it's the same with network marketing. It's just as ridiculous for us to feel any kind of fear of rejection because a waiter would never have any fear of asking someone if they want some dessert because the reality is some people just don't want dessert. Not that they don't like dessert, they just don't want any. It may just be the wrong time. And so here's the way to look at our network marketing businesses is our network marketing businesses are dessert for life.
Now, does everyone want dessert for life? And the answer, no, they do not. So, a great way to get over the fear of rejection and a great way to position what we do in, you know, in the minds of, of your, uh, of your new distributors is our job is not even to recruit people. Our job is to educate them on what our products and services are and have them understand our opportunity. So it's to educate and give understanding. Let them make the decision on their own. Now, I'm going to go through in uh, one of the future weeks, I'll talk about closing. I'm going to give you some masterful stuff. I mean, some of the best of the best. This stuff is going to blow your mind. It is really, really good. But um, teaching people how to be master closers is nowhere as important as it is to get people to simply get out there and show people. Um, if someone's got a list of, you know, a few hundred people on their names, it doesn't matter if they're a great closer, if they're not willing to go, you know, write the names down and go show people, it matters not how good they are at closing. Now, I'm gonna give you another analogy that you can use, and this one is especially true if you're using a sales tool, like a video presentation, to show your prospects. And so that's something that I, you know, use a lot with my organization. We have about a 14-minute DVD or an online video. And and so here's the analogy. When we show our video to our prospects, we're kind of like being a survey taker. So if you can imagine someone who uh, is a survey taker and your job is to basically uh, stop people as they walk out of a movie theater and your job is just to ask them if they like the movie, to ask them a couple questions about the movie. Now, you're going to have some people who say they don't like it. And when they tell you they don't like the movie, as a survey taker, did they tell you that because there's something wrong with the way you ask them? Is it, you know, is something about you? Is that why they don't like the movie? No. Obviously, another example that is completely ridiculous. Obviously, you didn't do anything wrong. You just asked them if they liked the movie. If they didn't like the movie, it's the movie's fault. It's not your fault. They're not saying no to you. They're saying no to the movie. And so the fact that one person didn't like the movie, does that mean everyone doesn't like the movie? Of course not. The fact that they didn't like the movie, does that mean that the movie industry itself is a scam? Of course not. Does it mean that the movie industry doesn't work? Of course not. See, our job in the business is to just show people the movie see if they liked it and then collect a simple decision as to whether they want to buy your products or services and partner up with you in business. Now, here's my story. Uh, I, I mentioned it took me almost six years. And one of the reasons for that is I would only show the business to people that I thought might join. And I tried uh, buying leads. I, I mean, I put signs on the side of the road. I, uh, you know, set up all kinds of crazy things. I mean, I spent so much money. I ended up going deep in debt uh, just because I was so afraid of talking to people. And so here's where it all finally came together for me. I finally got sick and tired of being sick and tired. I finally got tired of re trying to reinvent the wheel myself. I found a mentor and when the mentor worked with me, here's what he's told me to do. He said, make a list of everyone you know. And he said, stop, you know, and I kind of shared with him, you know, a little bit of what I had going on. And he was like, stop thinking people aren't gonna wanna do network marketing. See, I really did not have a rock solid belief in network marketing myself. And because I didn't have a rock solid belief in network marketing, then that showed up with fear and it showed up in the way that I was talking to other people. And he said, you've gotta just go show it to everyone. And if you're excited, and you know, you're not being needy with people, you're gonna be shocked at how many people are actually going to say yes, who are going to do it. You see, here's what I've discovered over the years is it's almost like everyone is a closet network marketer. You know, people may have a weird, uh, a bad taste in their mouth. Maybe they got involved in network marketing or maybe they got presented the wrong way, but there's so many people out there who have done it and failed, but they understand the power of networking. They, If they've ever done network marketing before, there was a reason why they did that. They had goals and dreams just like you do, and you may be the answer to being able to give them the dreams and the goals that they've wanted for so long. And so that's what happened with me is I finally decided, you know what, I'm going to show it to everyone. And a lot of the people that I thought were going to say no, they started saying yes. And some of the most unlikely people started saying yes. So here's what I did. I made a list of 300 people. 
300. And I just decided, you know what? I'm going to go from number one to number 300. I'm just going to call every single one and I'm going to stop caring about what people think about me, about what they, my opportunity. I just don't care. And you know what? I was always worried about the opinions of others. And here's something that is very true. You cannot pay your bills based on the opinions of other people. And if you buy someone else's opinion, you also have to buy their lifestyle. So you can use those two quotes in your marketing um, or rather when you're you know talking to new people or when you're um, you know talking to new people in your organization um, if you buy someone's opinion you also have to buy their lifestyle you can't pay your bills based on the opinions of other people and so this is what I did I made that list and I just attacked the list I went through it so fast and it was like I used to always try and give the perfect presentation or I'd want it to be like you know they had to come to the big shot meeting where the really good presenter was gonna be there and I finally said you know what I'm just gonna go to people it doesn't matter I'm just making a list of everyone and I'll tell you one thing this is an example of one thing that happened um, I enrolled one guy and he was uh, I hate to say it he was a dud and let's call him uh, Jimmy <laughs> I enrolled a guy named Jimmy and Jimmy was not really on the ball you know he wouldn't really come to meetings wouldn't really come to trainings and um, I was just enrolling people enrolling people enrolling people and Jimmy was was a dud. A lot of people probably wouldn't have prospected Jimmy, but I went ahead and prospected. I enrolled him in the business and I, you know, I followed up with him. Hey, do you have anyone that I can help talk to? And here's what Jimmy, what Jimmy ended up doing. He set up one meeting for me, set up one meeting for me. And I went and showed a guy named Glenn. Now, Glenn got excited. He enrolled. And I asked Glenn, hey, who can I show the business to for you? Uh, Glenn said, well, let's talk to Terry. So Glenn led me to Terry. Terry led me to one person, only showed the business to one other person, and it was a guy named Mark. Now, Mark ended up building a team of several thousand people. So what happened was I had a dud only enrolled one person that I actually really did the enrollment for. Uh, that dud led me to another dud who led me to another dud who led me to a stud. So here's a quote I'm gonna encourage you to write down. Every person that you don't wanna prospect knows someone that you do want to prospect. Every dud knows a stud. You never know who someone can lead you to. And so I'll give you my, uh, my philosophy on who I think you should show the business to is who can fog a mirror. There's a lot of out there who are going to tell you, you know, only talk to people who are really sharp or only talk to people who are, you know, really ambitious. And yes, I would agree that if you had to choose between showing it to a dud and showing it to someone who's really successful, show it to the person who's successful. But in order to really get your business rocking, don't be picky and choosy about who you're showing the business to. Show it to everyone. Now, there's a, a, let's talk a little bit about recruiting up. So a lot of times people will prejudge successful people. You know, they're a business owner. They already make a lot of money. They're a doctor. They're a lawyer. They're a chiropractor. Whatever it is, you think, well, they're super successful. They wouldn't want to do something like this. And I'll tell you one of the criteria that I, I train my group on is you want to show your business to the smartest people first, the most successful people first, because successful, smart people are usually the ones who are going to understand it. They're going to get what we do a lot faster than other people so you've got to show it to other people and see there's a reason why they're successful they're successful because they don't procrastinate they seize opportunity when they see it and so they should be the first ones that you go show it to if someone already owns a business that means they're entrepreneurial that means they're more likely to get involved in network marketing and do really well at it and so don't judge the super successful and it, one of the reasons why they can be amazingly great prospects is because of this recruiting up. And one of the laws of leadership is this. People will only follow others that are a higher level leader than themselves. And so let's say you. Let's say you are an eight. Now, on the scale of one to ten, maybe you're a ten. Maybe, you, you know, you feel like you're a five, whatever it is. But let's say you're an eight. If you're an eight, would you follow a six? 
The answer is no. You wouldn't follow a six. If you're an eight, you're only going to follow a nine or a ten, maybe another eight, but you're going to follow someone that's a higher level leader than yourself. And so what happens is when you recruit down and you only recruit down, see, my philosophy is this. If I'm recruiting down, the only reason I'm going to recruit a dud is so they can lead me to a stud. I'm not going to count on that dud building a massive business. If they do, hey, maybe they're, uh, you know, an eagle in training. Maybe they're going to grow, but don't count on it. And so, um, you know, I like to go to people who are already have some business savvy, who already have some confidence, who already have some posture because they're more likely to rise to a, a leader a lot quicker than someone else. Now, when you recruit leaders, what happens is you end up with uh, leader math and leader math and network marketing is multiplication. See, follower math is addition. So if you're recruiting people and you're only recruiting people at a lower level leadership than yourself, usually the way you grow is by addition. And see, that's what I used to do. Uh, before I got full time, before I made it work, I, I did get to the point where I became a really good recruiter. I could recruit people and I could sell people to get involved. And it was always people at a lower level leader than myself. And I could, I could add people and I could, you know, it was really good at that addition piece, but addition is painful because you're not getting the duplication. See, when you recruit leaders, leaders can recruit other leaders. Leaders can, you know, grow by addition and multiplication. And so that's what you want to go for. Okay, let's talk about where to get prospects. So starting out with who you know, obviously your cell phone. If you take your cell phone and go to your contact list, that should be the first place you go. And when I uh, talk to most people who've been in network wing for a little bit, they say, oh, I've already talked to everyone that I know. And it's real easy to figure out that they haven't because I just say, well, let's look at your cell phone, go to your contacts, and we go A to Z. Have you talked to Abe? No. Have you talked to Alan? No. Have you talked to Bob? No. Have you talked to Charlie? No. In fact, they haven't talked to most of the people on their cell phone list. And so obviously that is where you go first. Take out your cell phone, put it on paper, write it all down. Uh, number two, business cards. Um, go wherever you, if you store business cards, if you collect business cards, then, you know, take those and put them on your list. And I'll give you a quick strategy, something that I've been very conscious of over my years in network marketing is building a list of people and just staying in contact with people, um, mainly through, you know, collecting information. So when I go to any type of event, if I go to a seminar, then I want to collect as many business cards as I can, not just, you know, hey, can I have your card and then you run off, but it's creating as many powerful, strong connections as possible, getting their card, writing on the card something about them, you know, their kids, what they like to do, what they do for a living, things like that on the card so I don't forget who they are. And so a lot of times at events, you know, I'll collect a bunch of business cards with uh, and not recruit them anytime uh, immediately after. You know, obviously, maybe I should call them a few days after, set up a meeting and so forth. But, um, you know, I've just stayed in the mode year after year after year after year of collecting cards, building those contacts. And what happens is, you know, every few months, whenever I get into recruit mode, then I can always just go to my business cards. I can pull those out and I've got a lot of new people that I can call. And so that's something that I would encourage encourage you to do. Um, keep a massive contact list. One of the things that people are always shocked is, you know, I'll meet someone that I haven't talked to in several years and I can pull up in my phone, I can go to the notes section and I'll say, oh yeah, we talked about this. I know you have a daughter that does this. You have a home here and, you know, they can't believe it. But because of doing that, I, I have never run out of people to talk to. And that's something that I think can be very, very powerful for you. So make sure you're very diligent in maintaining a database. Now, other things, social media outlets. Uh, go to your Facebook page, and I would encourage you, print out your Facebook list. Print out that list uh, because chances are you've got several hundred friends. I think the average person on Facebook has 150 friends. You know, in network marketing, we typically have a lot more than that. 
than that. So print that list out. There's going to be obviously a lot of people you don't have the phone number for. You can send them a message and say, hey, what's your number? I got, a, uh, got something I got to run by you. So Twitter, if you have people that are following you on Twitter, on Instagram, any other social media outlets, LinkedIn, great strategy for finding other people to talk to. Now, also people that you do business with. So um, you know, your dry cleaner, your banker, things like that. You know, if you don't have their phone number, put their name on the list and that way they, you've got their name on the list, you're going to be a lot more mindful and you're going to remember to get their phone number next time you connect with them. And so here's the thing. This is what I want you to do. And this is what I'm going to encourage you to do is create a massive list. And there is so much power in having a big list because the psychology of having a big list, you're in abundance mode. See, when you have a small list, when your list is 10 people and you call two people and those two shoot you down, you've blown 20% of your list. Now, on the other hand, if you have a list of 200 people and two people shoot you down, that's only 1% of your list. You still have 198 people left to talk to. And so create that massive list. Another thing that my mentor taught me when I first started working with him he required that I always had my list on me whenever we did any type of presentations, when we're showing the business to someone, because you know, when you're sitting down with a prospect, here's one of the things, we'll talk more about this in the closing section, but people follow strength. They follow certainty. They don't follow wishy-washiness. They don't follow someone who's doing it as a little hobby. They follow strength. And so when you show up and you, you're sitting with your prospect and you have a list of 300, 400 names, then they get that you're very serious. They get that you are a leader with this. And so create a big list. And in the next module, we'll talk about how to generate prospects in the cold market, because obviously you've got a lot of people that you know, but which list is bigger, the people that you know or the people that you don't know. So we'll talk about that on the next module. We'll see you there. If you have gotten value so far, and um, this is... Um, this has started helping you already. Just type value. Just type value. If you have already learned something just from this, just how you make sure that you know you never run out of contact. What, what did you get? What did you get? I want to get your feedback before I play the next video. What did you get? What did you get? What did you learn? Just type what you learned briefly. What did you... What did you learn? Type it, type what you learned. And I hope you are writing. You learn to constantly expand your lists. Is that all you learn? Don't prejudge, Don't not just anybody. Don't prejudge successful people. Exactly, the people you don't want to prospect, know the people you want to prospect. Mm. The people you don't want to prospect, know the people people you want to prospect. So every dog knows the stud. So that's why you should not prejudge anybody, right? Uh-huh. Now, I'm, I'm going to highlight two things or three things, and then we'll, we'll go to the next one. The next one, we'll just wait for it. You've not gotten value yet. You will still get value. Calm down. You understand? Calm down. Now, first of all, he said something. He talked about his experience. He said when he started the business, right, it took him time. He was avoiding showing the business to the people that he knew. He was avoiding it because he was afraid of rejection. What will my friends say? And so many of you, that is where you are. There are some of you here. The reason you have not organized your home launch is because you don't want to show this business to the people who know you. You are scared of their opinion. He said he was scared of people's opinion. But one thing you must know is that people's opinion will not pay your bills. What your church members are thinking about you will not pay your bills. When you are hungry, if you run to those persons, they won't give you money to take care of your bills. People's opinion does not pay your bills. So he was scared, do you understand, of talking to what? To the people he knew. He was scared of showing what? Showing the people he knew this business opportunity. And because of that, he was stuck for so many years until he decided to go all out. He said, listen, he made a list of what? Of 300 names. He said, the worst thing that will happen is that they say, no, I will just go out and show this business to anybody. 
He started showing the business to anybody. He brought out his cell phone, made a list of 300 persons and started calling them. It doesn't matter what they said. He said, I don't care what they are going to say about this opportunity. I will show them the business opportunity. And that was how he started. From there, he signed up the store. The store led him to Jimmy. Jimmy led him to whoever. From before you knew it, one of them was leading them to another person that lead, led him to that person who built a massive business. That's how to grow in this business. So many of you, you still have warm contact. You have not even looked at it. You have not even looked at it. And he said something that the people who, are, who, are, who have done what, people who have built successful network marketing business, they do that from their warm contacts. Most of the people who are focusing on cold contact guys, you know, all the social media, social media, social media prospecting and all that. They recruit a lot of people through social media, but those people don't duplicate. After some time, the, the attrition is usually as they're signing up, they're quitting. And some of you, that's what you're experiencing. I was speaking with somebody who has done this business for some years. The person told me he has recruited up to over 200 persons over 200 downlines that he has brought into the business directly, but not up to 10 of them are currently doing the business. All of them, as they are coming, they are going, they are coming, they are going. But he says something, Matt Murray said something, that the people who do this business, who prospect in the crude way, the traditional way, the traditional way of what? Of, of prospecting. Genesis, and that is how to build a sustainable business. What is the traditional way? Make friends, make them your friends. Do you understand? Build rapport with that's the traditional way of prospecting, going out, meeting new people, getting phone numbers, developing relations. That is the traditional way of building this business. And that is how to build a sustainable business. That is how to get the people who will stay in your business. The people who will stay in your business, you have to go traditional. Are you with me now? If you check it, the people who have stayed in your business are the people you recruited through the traditional ways. The people who have stayed in my business are the people that I've recruited through the traditional ways. People that I knew, they are still my leaders in the business today. And he said something. He said, recruit leaders. Leaders will lead you to other leaders. When you recruit leaders, right? Right? When you recruit leaders, your business will Glow, we grow through multiplication. But when you are recruiting followers, your group, your business will grow through addition. Now, I will give you an example. Now, does that mean that all the people you should go out to go and, um, and be signing up are, um, you know, somebody who is a governor, somebody who is a who is who is already, you know, um, a traditional ruler? Is that what it means? No. People who have leadership capacities, people you know. That person who was your class rep in school, that person who was your senior prefect in school, that's a leader. Do you understand? That person who was leading one group in that your organization, in that place, in that your fellowship, those people are leaders. People who have handled some leaders, small, small leadership, your SUG president. Do you understand? People who have done small, small leadership, just small, 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 class rep, ordinary class rep. People who have leadership, look out for them, be intentional. Why do you think Dr. Mba was prospecting me for years? He prospected me the first time, I said no. Second time, I said no. He did not give up on me. Do you know why? He wanted to recruit a leader. He knows that this guy is a leader. He knew me from school. He knew that I have been leading from year one in my university. I have been in position of leadership in the fellowship. I have been a leader. So he knew that this guy is a leader. If I can recruit this guy, this guy will do what will multiply. And guess what? Today, look at what is happening right now. And that's the same thing that I've done. John Ugu was a leader in the fellowship. I went for them. I was strategic. Bright was a leader in the fellowship. Solomon, leader in the fellowship. I was a leader in the fellowship. Most of my people, people who have recruited in my business, they are all leaders. Even my wife was a leader in school. Do you understand? Recruit leaders and your business will grow through multiplication. Some of you, this is the deliverance you need. This is the deliverance you need. 
Focus on people who have leadership possibilities. That doesn't mean you cannot recruit others. He said it. When you recruit others, your goal is that through them, you will get to what? You will get to what? You will get to other leaders. Are you understanding this thing? This business now game, oh. <laughs> This business, Nagebo, you have to be strategic. You have to be, you have to be conscious of the things you're doing. It's not just recruit. You should be intentional. Even if you are recruiting a, a, a stud, right? Or a dog, right? Are you following me now? Are you getting value? So this is how to make sure that you are prospecting. Be intentional. You'll be doing the general prospecting. Be doing the general prospecting. That's not a problem. But then look out. There are some specific, specific prospecting you will have to do. Do you understand? There are specific prospecting. There are some persons you will target. Once you sign up that person, you sign up a generation. You have to be specific. You have to be intentional. While you are doing the general one, oh, do you understand? Between the general this thing, between the general prospecting, general, but then there are some specific and what? There are some specific people you're also looking out for. There are some specific people. You see all those people? Even if that person did not go to school, eh? but that person is a leader. Leader, for example, uh, market leaders. That person is a market leader. He's leading people. She's leading people. He has the capacity to gather people. Go for those kind of people who, as you are doing the general one, also be specific. Look out for people that once they come into your business, what happens is that what? But then, of course, leaders attract leaders. You will be able to fish out leaders when you, you are a leader. Are you with me now? Are you ready? So I'm going to play the second video right now. <laughs> it's 20 something minutes, less than 30 minutes, right? Right? Less than 30 minutes. This one is about cold market prospecting. Total strangers. Now, he had talked about what? going the traditional way you want to expand your contact list you want to be getting new persons who will sign up into your business right you want to get new persons you are going to be what will help a lot of you all right are you ready now if you are ready type ready if you are ready type ready i'm going to be playing this video now Get your writing. This one, the value you will get from this one is times two what you thought you got from the other one. All right? So get ready now. Make sure your writing materials. Make sure that your writing material is with you and that you are paying absolute attention. This is not the time to be chatting. Forget about the chat box. Are you with me now? And pay attention. This one will help you. In fact, this is the major reason I got us to be here today. All right. So watch and pay very, very close attention. Recruiting, otherwise known as the three foot rule. And I get asked a lot, Matt, if you lost everything, if you know, all your contacts went away, if you had to start from scratch, what would you do? And I'll tell you, if I lost every contact I had and I had nothing but me and my opportunity, or maybe I got dropped in some city where I knew no one and I couldn't recruit anyone outside of that city, what I would do is a cold market recruit. I would go out and meet people because I just know that there are people out there everywhere looking for something. and. You know, the three foot rule uh, in person cold market recruiting, it does require you breaking out of your comfort zone. And, you know, it, it's something I train a lot on is just the comfort zone where we live almost our entire life. Average people live inside their comfort zone and inside the comfort zone. It's easy. It's really easy to get by. You don't have to stretch. You don't have to go through fear of rejection. None of that. But you're never going to live the life you really want to live. So all your goals, all your dreams, 
those are all outside of your comfort zone. And the thing about being able to recruit in the cold market, once you get this skill down, once you master this skill, it allows you to just create money at will. It allows you to build new teams whenever you want. And it's one of the core reasons for the confidence that I stated in the intro video where I said, this is the confidence that I want you to have at the end of millionaire school is you'll be able to be dropped off in any city in the world where your company does business, take away everything, all your contacts, your money, all that, and give you nothing but the knowledge from what you learn in millionaire school, and you will be earning a full-time income within one year, or a six-figure income inside of one year. And one of the reasons for that, that I have that level of confidence is because I Number one, I know my numbers. And I know on the worst day ever, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to enroll about one out of every five people that I sit down and give a presentation with, that I show my network marketing opportunity with. And so when you get good in the cold market, what you can do is you can just back out the numbers. And so, you know, for mine, it, it's more like one out of three, but let's say one out of five. If you enroll one out of every five people that you, you show your business, to and you want to enroll one person per week in order to do that all you have to do is get three contacts a day three phone numbers every single day because every three contacts um, will typically lead to one appointment if you're doing it right that would work out to be five appointments per week or one new distributor per week, personally enrolled. Now, if your numbers are one out of every 10 people that you show the business to, then obviously you might have to contact six people per day. You can work out your numbers, but there's gonna be a law of averages, and if you just commit every day to going out and getting one new phone number or two fo new phone numbers, three new phone numbers, whatever it is, just get in the habit of doing that every single day, and I will tell you, you will become un stoppable. Now, it's easy for me to say that, and you might get motivated after hearing me talk and going through the training here, but if you're anything like me, I had a major, major fear in talking to people. And so I got started in my first networking opportunity and they trained on you know, meeting people in the cold market and just going up to people and saying, hey, you look familiar, you're from around here. And striking up a conversation, getting their phone number. And it sounded really simple, but what happened with me is I would go out, I'd go to the mall or I'd go to the grocery store and I'd walk around for two hours and I'd get no contacts. None at all. And I got to tell you, I felt like a supreme loser. I was so frustrated with myself. I even went to the really bad part of town where uh, a lot of people didn't even speak English. And I thought maybe if I'm not intimidated by people, if I recruit down um, in a really like poor neighborhood uh, or something like that, then I can recruit. I couldn't even recruit there. I mean, it just was not working for me. And so I'll tell you, I, this is what I ended up having to do to break out of my comfort zone. For me, just making eye contact was a stretch um, because typically if I'm at the mall or shopping or whatever, I was just looking down. I was staying to myself. And uh, if you know my story, I was not a popular kid in school. I was super shy. I didn't have a lot of friends. I was just a loner. I kept to myself. And so um, this is what I started doing. I, I said, you know what? I got to stop being... I gotta stop beating myself up because I'm not getting the phone number. And it took me a while to get to this point, but I said, I'm just gonna, you know, slowly get out of my comfort zone. And so I started going around and just making eye contact with people. Uh, I'd make eye contact with people. I'd smile, I'd nod, you know, I, I'd actually say hi. <laughs> um, and so it started out making eye contact, smiling, and saying hi. And I'd go do that to 10 and 20 people. And then that, when that would become a little bit more regular for me, when I wasn't super fearful of doing that, then I'd make eye contact, I'd smile, I'd say hi, and I'd say, how are you? I'd ask a question. And I just started forcing myself to do that more and more and more without ever even stressing myself out to get the phone number. And 
Um, you know, then it was maybe giving a compliment. Um, and so if you are afraid of talking to people, just push yourself out of your comfort zone. Do that consistently because what happens is your comfort zone, it, it's not like you step out of your comfort zone one time and then your comfort zone is expanded. It's kind of like a rubber band that won't break. You know, if, if you remember as a kid, um, what I, I remember when I was a kid, I'd get a rubber band and I'd stretch it and I'd stretch it and I'd stretch it and I'd stretch it. And I'd stretch it and and if you st keep stretching it, eventually it gets bigger. Uh, you know, the rubber band is bigger than it was. And so your comfort zone in life, it's kind of like a rubber band that won't break. You know, it, it is going to go back, but the more you stretch it, the bigger that comfort zone eventually gets. And what's happened over now 20 years of being in network marketing, I can go out and I can get phone numbers and I can meet people and it's not a big deal because I've just forced myself to do it. And here's the thing. If it, it took me almost six years to get full time, if it takes you a year, two years, three years, to get really good, to become a master of talking to people and just getting contacts whenever you want and being able to create income at will and to control your financial future, would it be worth it? The answer is yes. So listen, if you suck at this right now, if you are no good, if you are fearful, stick with me. Do not quit on yourself. Do not quit on network marketing. Um, stick with me in my trainings and you will eventually get good at this stuff. And one of the things that I had to kind of get over was just my mindset as it related to talking to people and really about network marketing in general. And this is, I think we're in the best climate that we've ever been for network marketing. In fact, all the stats on the size of the network marketing industry, we are growing like crazy. Over the last 10 years, our profession has grown 90% over the last 10 years. We're doing $178 billion in revenues and growing. There are more companies that are rocking and creating more momentum than I have ever seen in my 20 year career. And one of the reasons for that is in this economic climate, people are looking. We have got monster levels of unemployment and the unemployment levels that the government says we are at are not true. See, because what happens is after about six or nine months of someone not having a job, when they fall off of uh, getting unemployment checks, the government doesn't say they're unemployed anymore. They say they don't want to find a job. So they don't count towards that. And so the unemployment levels are huge. We have got record levels of consumer debt. The standard of living is worse than it was in the previous generations. People are having to work longer hours. They're having to work harder just to maintain the same standard of living from just 10 years ago. And so here's the deal. There are so many people out there. They hate their job. Evidence of that, the heart attack rate rises 35% on Monday mornings. Heart attacks go up 35% on Monday mornings because people do not want to go to work. So listen, people are hurting. They are open-minded more than they have ever been before. And so there are so many people out there right now praying for something to come along to change their life. And so you've got to look at yourself as the answer to people's prayers. Your network marketing company is the answer to people's prayers. And you know, I almost feel guilty not sharing my opportunity with people because if I don't break out of my comfort zone, if I don't share with them what I have, they have to keep living the life that they're living right now that they don't want to live. And so realize this is not just about us recruiting. It's not just about you recruiting. So this is about you helping other people. And I'll tell you my attitude. My attitude as it relates to recruiting and generating prospects and all this is I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, if I personally enroll someone in my network marketing opportunity, then I can change their financial future forever. Their grandchildren can live very different lives than they would if I hadn't come into that person's life. And if they're coachable and teachable and have the desire to work, I will make them unstoppable. And so for me, the way I learned to look at it is I don't need anyone. They really need me. And so have that attitude when you're going out and about and meeting people is just realize, look at everyone out there and just realize they've got pain. 
They have got pain in their life and you may be the solution to alleviate that pain. Now, another mindset point to have is don't go out to recruit. You know, what I used to do, I'd say, all right, I'm going to go to the mall and I'm going to recruit people and get phone numbers so I can enroll in a business and make a bunch of money. So I would encourage you to go out and make friends. That's got to be your attitude is I'm going to go out and make friends. I'm going to go out and help people. I'm going to go out and make people feel good about themselves. And if you have that kind of attitude, it's just going to serve you better. Uh, You're not going to be as needy. And I'll tell you, don't stress. There are people everywhere. So what used to happen to me is if I didn't get the number, then I'd feel like a loser. I failed. And here's what you got to know. There are people everywhere. So if you don't get the phone number, there's another person right around the corner. There is never a shortage of people. Never. And so I'll give you just a few keys. Number one, this is my goal. In fact, this is kind of one of my goals in life. If I'm giving a training on stage, if I'm doing a presentation to a group of people about my product and opportunity, my number one goal is to have fun. Have fun when you're out and about. And one for mine, I me, I just smile all the time. I am always smiling. I'm just always happy. And I know people probably think I'm crazy. I literally, you see me walk down the mall and I'm just smiling for no reason other than it makes me feel good to smile. I have more fun when I smile. And what happens is when you smile, you're more approachable. When you smile at someone else, typically they're going to smile back at you. And you know what happens is when you make someone else smile, you make them feel good. In fact, if you I just do it right now. If you're driving in your car, if you're watching the video on the computer, just smile and you're you feel better when you smile. You just do. A smile creates chemicals in your body that make you feel better. And so when you can go out and have fun and smile and joke around with people, and if you can have them smile or help them laugh, then you add value in their life and they're way more likely to want to have you as a contact, uh, eventually possibly do business with you. Uh, another one is have some con- confidence. You know, I went to the U.S. Marine Corps, and one of the things that uh, was interesting about the Marine Corps is our drill instructors, they always r- referred to everything as my. You know, this is my squad bay. This is my latrine. This is my whatever it was, my head, actually. Um, and so, kind of walk around like you own the place. Not being arrogant, just being confident. You know, stand strong, your shoulders back. Walk around like you've got some purpose in life. And another quick key is find reasons to like other people. (laughs) Just find, be genuinely interested in people and find a reason to really like them. Because here's a key is people like others who like them. Now, if you just really like someone, in fact, I do this all the time. If I'm getting a conversation with someone and they're just kind of a cool person, I'll just tell them, say, you know what? I really like you. You are an awesome person. And you know what happens when I say that is they end up liking me more because I like them, because they get that I'm seeing value in them and I'm seeing that they're a good person and that they're fun. And so, you know, that's one of the keys. Now, uh, one of the greatest books that you can read is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I'd encourage you until you at least get to a full-time income, read that book um, at least once a year. At a bare minimum, once a year, read that book. And it is just, I, I don't know of any book that's any better on showing you how to go out and meet people and have people like you and earn friends. And so here's a few keys that I would encourage you to write these down, commit these to memory. Number one, become genuinely interested in other people. Um, it, it, get in contact. It's not about you uh, telling things about yourself. You know, people care about themselves. That's the reality of the situation. And become interested. And when you're interested in them and you're interested in the things that they're interested in, they like you. And as we know, people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. So, Number two is smile. I mentioned it earlier, so uh, smile all the time. Number three, remember that a person's name 
to that person is the sweetest and most important sound in any language. So it also helps you commit their name to memory when you repeat it. So when you meet someone new, try and use their name a couple times. Now don't be obnoxious and every single sentence, you know, say their name, but say their name two or three times. It allows you to commit it to memory and they like the fact that you're saying their name. Number four, be a good listener encourage other people to talk about themselves. So when they bring something up about themselves, you know, one thing you might add is something like, well, tell me more about that. Oh, really? Tell me more. Um, that allows them to continue talking about themselves or something they're interested in, and that's what they like. Number five, talk in terms of the other person's interests. So, you know, they tell you they like a certain thing. Ask them more about that. Don't go off and start talking about what you like. Keep it focused on their interests. And then number six, make the other person feel important and do that sincerely. And it really just boils down to giving a compliment and, and being open. You know, one of the things I used to feel like I had to be guarded with my emotions or how I felt about other people. You know, if I liked someone or I thought they were a really cool person, uh, it was an awkward situation for me to tell them that. It was like I wanted to be cool and so I wasn't gonna compliment them. And what I learned to do is, is instead of trying to just uh, keep that power to myself, when I started giving it away, that's when I really became powerful. And, you know, learn to compliment other people a lot. If you want to become a master network marketer, I'm going to encourage you to create a resolution in your life. Create a resolution to every day Go give three compliments, three compliments a day. And what you will notice is that people just light up. It makes them feel good. They like you more. And so learn to compliment others a lot. And I'm going to tell you, if you do this, it will be powerful. Just you could put that if you have a daily uh, planner or to do list, something like that, just every day. Give three compliments and just watch what starts to happen. So I'll give you some more of my personal strategies when I'm out and about. Number one is look sharp, dress the part. You know, I uh, I kind of came from an old school um uh, when I got started in network marketing, you know, they just talked about being clean shaven, dressing nice. And here's my philosophy is I want to go, I want to be able to recruit anyone. I want to be able to recruit a CEO of a multinational corporation. And if I'm looking like a slob, I'm not very likely to be impressive to that CEO. And so I'm not saying you have to spend a ton of money on clothes because when I got started in network marketing, I didn't have a lot of money to spend on clothes. I was a really young guy. It was uh, tw when I first hit six figures in network marketing, I was 24 years old. And one thing that was interesting is I, I didn't have any money. I had one good suit and I wore that suit out. I wore it all the time. I didn't wear a tie most of the time. I've just never uh, never enjoyed wearing a tie. But I'd wear a, a suit with no tie or wear a sport coat with uh, you know jeans. Just look sharp. And uh, the other thing, you know, making eye contact. If I'm if I'm gonna contact someone, I'll just give you a little bit of my formula. Number one, I'm gonna be dressed sharp. I'm gonna be smiling. I'm gonna be having fun, and I'm gonna make eye contact with someone. I'm gonna smile, and I typically just give a compliment right off the bat. If I just see someone, um, I'll sometimes I'll just stop someone and say, "Hey, are you from around here?" And they'll say yes, no, whatever they say, and I'll say, "Listen, because man, that's an that's a really sharp suit you're wearing. What do you do for what do you do for a living?" And then I'm just interested in them, and and so again, I'll just quick formula: make eye contact, smile. You can ask them if they're from around here. Give them a compliment. Um, and then what I like to do is ask them what they do for a living. And when they tell me, I say, oh, wow, how long have you been doing that? When they tell me, whatever the answer is, if it's uh, a year, if it's 10 years, I say, wow, you must love it to have been doing it that long. And then I pause and I wait for an answer. Now, a lot of times people say, yeah, I do. It's great. But a lot of times people say, no, not really. And that's my in. I know I got them. And I say, well, you know, you are a really sharp looking guy or you're a sharp 
you know, looking uh, lady, I'm a recruiter for my company. We're growing like crazy. We can't bring people on fast enough. Are you married to your job or are you open-minded? So write that down. Are you married to your job or are you open-minded? That's something where, you know, most people are going to say they're open-minded. And I'm typically in a hurry. Um, you know, busy, they always say busy people are in a, or, sorry, successful people are in a hurry. So I'm typically, you know, in a hurry, right? And so I'm going to give that compliment, ask them what they do for a living. Oh, wow, how long have you been doing that? Man, you must love it to have been doing it that long. If they give me an in at that point, they say, ah, you know, it's okay. And I said, well, you know, you're a sharp guy. I'm a recruiter for my company. We're growing like crazy. We can't bring people on fast enough. Are you married to your job or are you open-minded? If he says he's open-minded, at that point, I'm going to say, well, listen, I'm running late. I've got to hop on a call or I'm running late for a meeting or I've got to run. But And I'll tap my watch typically. Um, I've got to run, but do you have a business card on you? I'll give you a call. And if they don't have a business card, uh, if they do have a business card and they give that to me, I'll make sure their cell phone is on it. If not, I'll have them write their cell phone number on it. If they don't have a business card, then I'll say, listen, um, here, put your number in my phone real quick and I'll give you a call here in the next couple days. We'll have coffee. And when I say we'll have coffee, it's, it's almost like me reassuring them that I am going to call. It's like, don't worry, I'll call you. Uh, we'll have coffee. And it, what happens is I'm leading them. And the reality of people is we are used to being led. See, when we're babies, our parents tell us what to do. When we're kids, our parents tell us what to do. When we go to school, our teachers tell us what to do. When we get a job, our bosses tell us what to do. Everyone is used to being led. And so one of the keys to this, um, the part of the business and getting contacts is just leading other people. Never ask someone if you can have their phone number. If you're asking it as a question, then what happens in their mind is maybe there's a reason I shouldn't give the phone number. And so I like to just ask for a bit, hey, do you have a business card on you? Or here, put your phone number in my phone. I'll give you a call here in the next few days. We'll have coffee. And I'm just telling them, we'll have coffee. Like, it's a done deal. It's happening. And I almost never have them not give me their number. Now, um, it seems like I went for a couple years and everyone would, every time they'd give me their number. And uh, just the other day, I, I was actually, I, I did this and they didn't give me their phone number. It was just a weird situation, they didn't. And you know what? There's another person around the corner. I have no emotional attachment whatsoever to that person. The only thing that I can do is help them. And so if they don't wanna give me their number or they're not open-minded, there's another person around the corner. Now, I'm going to give you another uh, another strategy that I use a lot. I primarily use this with uh, men, you know, me being a guy. One of the things you have to be conscious of is make sure that if it's someone of the opposite sex that uh, they don't think you're trying to hit on them. If I'm talking to a female, typically I'm going to mention my wife. If I'm giving a compliment, I might say, uh, wow, that is an awesome dress. My, You have the exact same style as my wife. She would love that. Where'd you get that? Or what do you do for a living? And so you see how I brought up my wife. Um, guys, girls, you can bring up your girlfriend, your boyfriend. Uh, the key is, you know, just make sure they don't think you're trying to hit on them. So here's one of mine is just being confident and bold. And if I, I've done this a bunch of times where I see a guy in a suit and tie and he looks really sharp, I just stop him. I go, excuse me, what do you do for a living? You're really sharp. Or, or I'll just, what I typically would do is I'd compliment and then ask what they do for a living. I'd say, man, that is a nice suit. What do you do for a living? And what happens is when you're that bold, what that shows the other person is that you have confidence. See, boldness equals confidence in most people's minds. And so when I just stop someone and say, man, that is a nice suit. What do you do for a living? And it's like I'm interviewing them right off the bat. And it kind of stops them in their tracks a little bit. And they say, oh, well, I'm in this. And I say, well, how long have you been doing that? And they tell me, I'm just immediately going in on an interview. Uh, how long have you been doing that? Uh, two years. Two years, wow, you must love it. Uh, if they're in sales, I'll say, you must, you must be the top performer. And if they say they are the top performer, I'd say, well, are you married to what you're doing? Or are you open-minded? Because I build sales teams. You know, it, and it don't get tied up with the exact verbiage of what to say. The key is just do it and do it a lot. There's an art and science to doing this. I'm giving you a lot of the science. I'm giving you some things to say, but in a lot of cases, I can just tell based on someone, the way that someone's dressed, the way that someone's carrying themselves, I might say something different 
based on you know who they are as a person. That's the art. And so the key is just do it a lot. And when you do it a lot, you end up getting good at it. Now, here's another thing. A lot of times, if I'm on a cruise ship, if I'm at a resort, if I'm sitting next to someone on a plane, I don't want to go into recruiting mode. I don't want to give a pitch right there. And so what I'll do is I'll just make a friend. And rather than saying, what do you do for a living? How long you been doing that? Oh, you must love it. Uh, I'm a recruiter for my company. You know, I don't go through any of that. And I just want to make a friend. And so I'll I'll ask them what they do for a living and then I'll say something like cool what do you do for fun when you're not engineering what do you do for fun when you're not being a carpenter what do you do for fun when you're not being an attorney um, I'll find out about their family I'll find out about their children I'll tell them about my children I'll tell them about my family uh, I'll look for common interests you know if maybe they're really into sports uh, maybe they play sports what kind of travel interests they have you know if they like to travel I'll ask them you know where's your favorite place that you been and I'll ask about that I say oh man I've always wanted to go there um, things like that and then if we've built a friendship then I'm not even gonna bring up business I'm just gonna say you know what you are a super cool person my wife would I'm sure my wife would love to hang out with uh, your family uh, we should stay in touch do you have a business card and you know if they don't have the card I'll say here put your number in my phone let's stay in touch and so the key is just be cool with it and when I first started going about this, I know I seemed very awkward. And I seemed awkward because I was needy. I was awkward because I felt like I wasn't a good communicator. And, you know, one of the keys, I think, in becoming really good at this is just being good with people. And there's a lot of different books you can read. I mentioned How to Win Friends and Influence People. Uh, there's another great book called How to Have Power and Confidence in Dealing with People. There's a book called Skill with People. Uh, there's another book. In fact, it's right uh, behind me on my bookshelf. It's called How to Make Contacts and Win Friends by Carl Randolph. There's so many good books on just developing your people skills. So really learn to get good at dealing with people and you can be dropped in any city in the world. You can just go out on the streets, make friends, get phone numbers, set up appointments, and you can build a massive, massive, massive business. And so I hope you enjoyed this. I will see you on the next module. Have you been helped tonight? Have you been helped tonight? Has your business been helped tonight? What you've learned today, has it saved you from a lot of stress? And how many of you are going to get good at meeting new people, making friends and getting contact? That is the traditional way of doing network marketing. This is the what? The, the traditional way of doing network marketing. You want to build a business that will lie in the business. You want to sign up people who you can easily duplicate with. And this is it. This is the traditional way. This is the traditional way of making sure that you always have contacts to call. You always have people. So even if even if you, you relocated to a new environment, when he started, he said, <clears throat> he said something. Say, so what will you do if you are taken to a new city? You are dropped in the middle of nowhere. How would you build your business? If you have to start all over again, if they collect all your current contacts, all the people that you know currently right now, you don't know anybody, will you be able to build a business from the scratch that will succeed? This is the key. This is how to do it. This is how to do it. So guys, let's get to the traditional way of building this business. Let's go out. Go out of your comfort zone. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. Zone. Overcome that. He said, spend time and get what? Get, get good at getting people's number. He said, would it be worth it? Yes, it will be worth it. Yes, it will be worth it. Are you with me now?
So there's a lot to learn. There's a whole lot to learn from this training. So I will give you the title of this training, um, um, Code Market Prospecting by Matt Morris, M-A-T-T. Everybody get this video, watch it tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow Millionaire School, everybody watch this, uh, sorry, tomorrow cell meeting in your offices. This is our cell meeting. Everybody watch this. Recruiting what? Um, cold market recruiting by Matt Morris, right? Cold market recruiting. Everybody play this video in your what? In your cell meeting tomorrow morning and everybody watch it if I were you. I will wait till tomorrow morning. I will watch it this night. Get it this night. This is a training you should listen to over and over again, over and over again, over and over again until it enters you. And then as you are listening to it, you are practicing it. As you are listening to it, you are practicing it you are going out you are meeting new people you are getting new contact guess what it's not something difficult in your church you see people in your mosque you see people in your office in your shop people come around use these strategies right use this strategy and before you know it you will build a new set of what a new set of a new set of contacts. So I don't want to hear anything. I don't have contacts anymore. I don't have a warm market contact. You are today. I have solved that problem. I have brought you this training that will help you go out and build your new contact list. Do you understand? Network on purpose. You go out for meetings. You go for conferences. Get people's what? Get people's complimentary card. And he said something. I want to stress. He said something. Don't directly ask people to give you their number. Say, can I have your number? Most of them will not give you their numbers. After you compliment them, say, can I get your number? They won't give you their number. Ask them, do you have a business card? Do you have a card here? You know they don't have a card. Most of most people, even me, I don't have card. So they tell you, no, I, oh, I don't have. I don't, okay, okay. Then you give them your phone number. You give them your phone. Open your phone. When you are talking, open that dialer. Open that um, dialer section in your phone, right? When they tell you what, uh, I don't have my card yet. Hand over your phone. Okay, let me have your number. We'll get. We'll keep in touch. We can have what we can see over coffee. We, of course, here in Nigeria, we don't do coffee, right? We don't do coffee. All right, we can hang out. You know, we can keep in touch after you've complimented. That's a powerful. Don't go direct asking people to give you their number. No, ask for their card. <laughs> we do so without coffee, Abby. <laughs> Abby, right? Beautiful. So please, everybody, I brought the, what I did this night is to bring this training to your notice. The people who are going to succeed are those who will listen to it over and over again. The people who are going to what, right? Who are going to what? Who are going to um, uh, who are going to um, do this thing? Who are going to watch it over and over again? If you don't trust the people, please. Tell them, okay, call your number. Hold your phone and call it so that they will not run away with your phone if you don't trust the person. Tell them, okay, call your number. Call your number then. Call your number then. You ask the person. It's not your fault that the person does not have a business card. It's not your fault that the person doesn't have a business card. So if you are scared of them running away with your phone because this is Niger, you just say, okay, call your number then. Call your number then. Don't say, give me your number. Say, call your number then. They will call it. It's not your fault that they don't have a business card, right? So you go out now, right? Um, um, you go out now, and then before you know it, new every day you can be building your contact list. And then whenever they tell you something, when you find out what is what is um is it about them, write it and take note so that when you are contacting them, what happens is that you are able to keep in touch with them. You have something to deal with. Now, don't collect somebody's number just like that and you give them all of those things when you are on a long journey. You are traveling from um, you are traveling from Abuja to Lagos. I know that that one is one hour journey. It's okay, you look good. And then you collect number. You don't be in a recruiting mood. Make them friends. Talk with them. Get the number when you're about to leave. Are you with me? Because the person will start asking you more details because you have time. Both of you are stuck together. You have time. So the person will be telling you, explain what the business is all about. No, don't do that in your first sitting. Don't do that. So you need to what, right? You need to for those who really want to succeed. Those who really want to what, who want to build sustainable, sustainable,
attainable success and prospect. Do you understand now? So this is how to prospect. This is how to make sure you are successful with your prospecting. I'm very sure you got maximum value tonight. I'm very sure you got excess value tonight. Matt Morris is one of my favorite teachers, one of my favorite mentors in network marketing. I've learned a lot. He's, so, he's very clear and he's very, very concise. So if you look for, if you want people that can teach you on anything in network marketing, Matt Morris is the person, right? One of the persons. I, I love him so much. And I've learned a lot in this business through his teachings. So you can go go for what you can go go for most most of his training. Get his training. Listen to him. All the areas, all the skills in this business. He has done powerful trainings that can really really help you. All right. You are struggling in any area in this business. Just go and what go and listen to Matt Morris. He will definitely have something to tell you that will get you to improve your business. So, finally, guys, this is the week for refresh. I have. I have something to say about the refresh conference that is coming up in, uh, in Lagos. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of slots. Um, some things happened. I'm not going to go into details. And uh, um, the, the whole slot for the whole start team has been reduced. So, so many of you have paid for, um, for the refresh um, retreat coming up this weekend. Unfortunately, a lot of people will not be able to go for that. That training is strictly for people who are in Lagos, right? Who are in Lagos, right? So we'll start from there. And then the whole of Achievers team, as big as we are, we only have 15 slots, only 15 slots. So I am going to be doing selection. Do you understand? With your leaders, I will be doing selection. So not everybody will be getting it so that you will know. So what will happen is that the best full-timers, this will be priority will be given to full-timers alone some of you will not be able to get it sorry it, it has happened how it happened um i'm going to be sharing this it's only 15 and we just have this night to make sure so those of you who have made payment don't worry your monies will be refunded back to you sorry about that but don't worry we'll still have better opportunities bigger opportunities where we will attend bigger and better world meetings don't get don't feel bad let's see how my team i've already planned we have gotten twenty thousand persons that are going to be attending 20 of my teammates, don't worry. If it is two slots you got, no problem. Make do with it. Let those your delegate, let them go there. Let them go and learn and come back and teach everybody. Do you understand? We wanted to carry everybody to go as many persons as possible, but that's not possible anymore. If there is improvement, if between today and tomorrow we get more slots, you will still know. But as of now, it's only 15 slots. For the whole of Activas team, in fact, the people in Lagos and the environs, in fact, people who have already paid we're up to 170 people that have paid already. 170, but everything has been slashed down to 15 slots. So you get the point now. You get the point. So we would have to what? We will have to make do with this. So some of you will not even get at all. Only what? Only 15 slots. And I have to share it among. So I'm giving priority to the people who are in Lagos and who have a team, a current team in Lagos. There's an office and all that. Those are the persons that will be getting this law. So if you don't get it, don't get, don't be angry with me. Do you understand? Don't be angry with me. Do you understand? So, and of course, I'll be giving priority to the people who are paid before. Uh -huh. So those are the persons that will be getting. So I have to say it general so that when your leaders are explaining to you, you will not feel bad. Uh -huh. It's not the problem of your leaders. Do you understand? This is where it is coming from right this is where it is coming from so we are just going to make do with it we are going to be make do with the little we are able to get don't worry don't feel bad don't worry there will still be other trainings are you with me there will still be other retreats and all of that okay so thank you for understanding thank you for understanding right so good night everybody let's go and practice don't forget tomorrow cell meeting we are all learning about this go and get it cold market recruiting listen to it okay listen to it are you with me now listen to it and gain knowledge from it, all right? And implement. Don't forget that tomorrow is another millionaire school, starting millionaire school, 8 p.m. Make sure that you're all here on time. And then of course, next week, Monday is going to be another powerful millionaire school. Make sure that you and all of your teammates are connected for the trainings and the value you're gonna be getting. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Yeah.